Would you like to know how to use margin to trade options like a hedge fund? One of the things that some options like is the ability to trade as if they have a lot bigger account. If done properly, this can really amplify your returns. But if done improperly, this can destroy your account. In this video, I'm going to talk about margin and how you can use it in a safe way that will help you and not in a way that will be a liability or that will hurt your account. I like to compare trading on margin using this example. It might be likened to someone who rides a bike versus someone who travels flying an airplane. Now most of us here probably know how to ride a bike and we're probably pretty good at it. And it's a relatively safe way to get around. Yes, you could, I guess, get hit by a car, which wouldn't be a good thing, but typically riding a bike is a safe way to get around. It'll get you where you wanna go. Now compare it to flying an airplane. If you fly in an airplane, you can get to where you want to go a lot faster. For example, say that you have a 3,000 mile journey. If you rode a bike, it could take you many, many days. In an airplane, we're talking hours. So it can get you there a lot faster. And you might say, if done properly, it's a lot safer than riding a bike over several thousand miles. But what if the airplane is being flown by someone who maybe read a few books about flying, who maybe watched a few YouTube videos about flying, who really didn't have a lot of experience flying an airplane? Well, in that case, I think, and you'll probably agree with me, that'd be a bad decision to fly an airplane. And it'd be a lot safer just to ride a bike to travel that 3,000 miles. It's kind of the same way with option trading using margin. If it's done by someone who knows what they're doing, well, it could be a great thing to do. But if option trading on margin is done by someone who doesn't know what they're doing, well, it's just a matter of time before the inevitable crash happens and they destroy their account. For those that are new to margin, or even those that are experienced, here are some very important things that you must know if you're going to trade using margin. One important thing to know, as I alluded to earlier, is that there are several different types of margin. You have Reg T margin and you have portfolio margin when it comes to stock and option trading. And with Reg T margin, usually the requirement is higher than if you have portfolio margin. And this is mandated by the government. But if you trade using Reg T margin, it allows you to have less capital in your account as compared to if you were trading in a cash account. As you see here, with our Reg T account, we're only required to have $1,776 in that account to trade the same optional margin as compared to our portfolio account we only need to have $1,194. So it's generally a lot less requirement if you have a portfolio margin as compared to Reg T margin. And again, keep in mind, these amounts move around up or down as a position moves for or against you. The reason why the margin requirement is less for portfolio margin is because as you see here, it's based on your overall portfolio. So if you have a well-diversified portfolio, maybe you have shorts and longs when it comes to options, then the margin requirement will be less than if you were trading using Reg T. As you see here, the long and short positions can be netted against each other and calculated so that your margin requirement is a lot lower based on the risk of your overall portfolio and not just one position at a time. Because of this, portfolio margin usually results in a lot lower margin requirement than Reg T margin. So how can you use margin in a safe, simple, and easy way that benefits you as compared to hurts you? Make sure you completely understand the risk you're taking if or when a position goes against you. You see, it's just a matter of time before a position or multiple positions go against you to the next market crash. Or if you're short call options, then before the next market melt up. You want to understand your risk and have a plan in place for when that happens because it will happen. And what might that plan look like? What do you do when a position goes against you? Well, here you have three ideas of what you can do. First, you can just flat out exit the trade when it goes against you. That is one alternative. If something fundamentally changes with the company that I'm trading in, then that is what I will do. But if the market's fear and greed has just caused the stock's price to crash on us and we sold some put options and nothing has really fundamentally changed with the company, if that's the case, then I'll look to adjust, repair, or just roll the position more back into our favor. And finally, if a cash care put option has gone against us that we sold and I'm comfortable owning the stock, well, I'll just take a sign of the stock and turn it into a covered call. The thing about trading on margin is that you can never really just place a trade and forget about it. It's not like if you just buy a stock and then say, I'm gonna own this stock for a year and just forget about it. With selling options on margin, you kind of have to keep an eye on it. Now, you don't have to be glued to your screen every second of every day, but you wanna check it at least once or twice a week. If everything's going good, then you're good for the next week. Now, I tend to check mine a little more often because I have the time and it's what I do professionally for a living. But you simply can't just sell or buy an option and just forget about it. You wanna keep an eye on it. Another very important point to keep in mind is just because your broker says you have margin available to trade with, it doesn't mean you should trade with it. Here you see the details of my large trading account. In this account I have portfolio margin. Notice here under margin requirements, that my current initial margin on my positions is 355,000. And my maintenance margin is a bit less, or the margin I need every day at this given moment in time, it's only $322,791. And in cash, I have over $466,000. I also have additional stocks that I own that I've already paid for, 
which I've turned into covered calls. But notice with the $466,000 cash I have available, our broker is saying I can trade as if I have $2.7 million. That's about six times the amount of cash that I have available. And that leads me to the next point. Never use a high percentage of your available margin. Always make sure you have plenty of room left before you make any new trade. As you see here, I have $2.7 million available to me after all the positions I'm already trading and my current positions only require $322,000 worth of margin. So although I could trade eight times as many positions as I'm doing now, I'm not going to. I will add to my account as I see opportunities, but I'm not gonna get anywhere close to 100% of my margin usage. If you're new to margin, I strongly encourage you not to use it at all, but if you're gonna use it, keep that percentage very low, definitely under 30%. Once you know what you're doing, you can bump that up, but if you're newer to margin trading, keep that percentage that you're using very low. Remember to treat using margin kind of like if you were going to fly an airplane. You wouldn't just read a couple books, watch a few YouTube videos, and then jump in an airplane by yourself and fly that airplane. There's no way you'd do that. So you don't wanna do the same thing when it comes to trading using margin. Get lots of practice and consider using a teacher or a mentor to help you learn how to trade using margin. Only then you can begin to trade on margin, but use a very tiny percentage of your account and watch what happens when you go through good and bad markets. Watch what happens to that margin requirement, how your portfolio value goes up and down. Now I want to share with you a couple tips that will help you protect your account if you begin to use margin. First, if you're going to sell put options, consider only selling them in companies that are already potentially undervalued. I have an ongoing list where I track companies that I feel comfortable trading in that are potentially undervalued. Those are the ones I like to sell options in. The second very important tip if you're newer to margin and option trading is to consider selling out of the money options as compared to at the money. Now what this simply means is, let's say a stock is trading for $100 per share and you want to sell a put option, don't sell the $100 put option or the $95 put option. Consider selling the $80 put option. The stock's trading for $100 and you're selling the $80 put option. That option is pretty far out of the money by about 20%. A lot of things can happen or go wrong against you and you're still okay if it's a good stable company. But here's the reason why I encourage you to sell out of the money options as compared to at the money options, especially if you're new to option trading. Now as an option seller, we know time decay is our friend. That means that if nothing changes, the value of the option we sold will actually go down in value each day. Now notice the different time decay curves when you sell options. Now first, the blue one is an at the money option. So say the stock's trading for 100 and you're selling about the $98 strike price put option. Well notice it takes a while before that time decay really kicks in. It really doesn't kick in until towards the very end of the option's expiration period. But notice what happens on an out of the money option. Let's say a stock's trading for around $100 per share and you're selling the $8 strike price option. And here this chart shows nine months. Notice how fast that time decays at first if nothing changes with the underlying stock. About halfway through, you'd be able to pocket over half your profit. So that's why I say consider selling out of the money options as compared to at the money options anytime, but especially if you're newer to using margin and you're trading in options. A third very important tip that you wanna keep in mind if you're trading in options, but especially if you're trading on margin, is to close profitable positions early. Here you see a position that we closed out just a few days ago in CFR. We sold these options back in March, about a month and a half ago, and they lost pretty much almost all their value. Although we pocketed over $1.20 per share for all these put options, as you see here, we're able to buy them back for just 15 cents per share. That was nine days before they actually expired. So by doing this, we've booked our profits, we've taken that risk completely off the table. So close very profitable positions early and that'll take some risk off the table in case the position were to go way down really fast. The next tip is to consider doing some back testing with your strategy. Before you place any trade, you should look at some back tests on your strategy. If you're selling options, there's no exception. And there are several brokers that offer free back tests. For example, here on E-Trade, you see they offer you a free back test. Now it's a very simple back test, but it's better than nothing. There are some companies that have a lot more detailed and advanced back testing software, such as Option View and Option Explorer. So if you don't mind paying for them, you might check into those. But see if your broker or if there's a free back testing software you can use. Here you see an example of a very simple back test on E-Trade. We're looking at Realty Income, whose ticker symbol is O. We're looking at just selling a cash security put option. E-Trade doesn't give you much variety here. You can do a cash care put option or a cover call back test. But let's just go with a cash secure put option. So we'll pick cash care put option and then we'll do a search here. And here you see the results that have popped up for a potential cash care put option trade in realty income. Notice we have various expiration days from the 180 expiration day down to a 30 days till expiration. It also includes 60 and various choices here. 
Now, if we sort this by total strategy return, we see the highest one is at 15.5%, and the lowest one actually had a loss of negative 20.5%. So now we can dig in here and see a few more details about it. You see it's some that we'd sell the 20 delta cash care put option, but it gives you several other strike prices, including the 45, 47.50, and 42.50. The 0.2 delta, the 100-day expiration, is saying that it would expect your return to be around 15.5%. Now compare that to the stock's return during this time frame as a negative 21%. So you can see, well, that's a strategy that seems interesting. It performed a lot better during this time frame as compared to realty income. And then E-Trade also has a custom feature for your back testing. You can change the date range, you can change the delta you're looking to sell, the minimum bid, as well as the days to expiration. And finally, how far out you'll roll the trade. So basically, just do some back testing of your potential idea. Next tip is that I strongly encourage you to paper trade or use a simulated account. And do that long enough so you experience something that goes for you and goes against you and watch what happens to your margin requirement. That can go way up if a stock or the overall portfolio were to experience a big hit. It's very important to know how your account will respond during good and bad market conditions. The next tip is to trade with a similar size as what you're going to do with your real cash. What I mean by that is if you're gonna have a $100,000 cash account, don't trade with a simulated $10,000 account. Trade with a $100,000 simulated account. That way you're familiar with how the numbers will move around on you as positions go for and against you. The next tip is to consider having some hedges in place. At minimum, you wanna buy some protective put options against the puts you're selling. And I like to do that. I don't do it on every trade, although I probably should. But on some positions, I don't feel like I need the protection. I have enough confidence in the company, even if things were to go against me. But overall, have some portfolio protection. As you see here, we've bought some put options against SPX. I feel like the market was overvalued, so over the past several months, we've been buying some protected put options that will go up in price if the overall market were to experience a sharp decline. So consider having some hedges in place that will benefit if the overall market were to go down. And at minimum, buy yourself some protection by buying farther out of the money put options against put options that you've sold. Why do I say it's important to have those hedges? Well, here we're looking at a monthly chart of the spider, of SPY. And notice what happens about every 10 years. Going back to the 2000 era, we experienced an over 40% crash over the next several years. Fast forward to the Great Recession, in a very short period of time, just about a year and a half, the market crashed around 50%. Now I'll zoom in here, and I think we all remember COVID. During just a matter of a month and a half, the market crashed over 33%. And in 2022, we experienced another approximately 30% decline. Do you notice a pattern here? These declines are happening faster and faster. When they happen, they're happening with a lot more violence. For example, now we have a nice advance in the market. We're up over 25% over the past several months. When I look at the fundamental values of the S&P 500, I believe that we've been about 20% overvalued. That's one of the reasons why I started buying some protective hedges. So always have those hedges in place because this next crash, the next 20, 30, 40, 50% crash, it's coming. It's just a matter of will it be next month the next couple of years. If you hedge properly, you can actually receive great financial benefit during the next market crash while also protecting your account. It does cost you a little money, but that insurance will be worth it during that next inevitable crash. My final tip is don't just blindly follow someone's trades. Completely understand every trade you're doing. If you don't understand it, spend the time to understand it. If you still don't understand it, don't do the trade. Just watch the sidelines, and that way you can learn what the person is trading and if it matches your trading style. If done properly, trading options using margin can amplify your returns. And if used properly, you can actually use some of that to hedge your account for a very low cost. On the other hand, if done improperly, it can absolutely destroy your account. So please, before you use a penny of margin, make sure you completely understand what you have at risk and what you're trading. If you'd like to get an alert whenever we buy stock or sell options, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. Knowing how to repair option positions that have gone against you is a very important tool to have at your disposal. If you'd like to see some of my favorite tricks to repair positions that have gone against me, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled Option Repair Strategies. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.